Hello, Temple friends, and welcome to TempleCast. I'm Jim Gennati, pastor of Temple United Methodist Church in North Coventry Township, Pennsylvania, and this is episode 66 of our pandemic podcast, which really has gone on too long now. Unfortunately, it looks like we'll be doing this podcast indefinitely as the coronavirus trends are all heading in the wrong direction at present. I trust that all our listeners are still doing all they can to protect themselves and others. In our most recent church newsletter, I wrote about how much I dislike wearing masks, but I am also committed to wearing them for the rest of my life if I need to, in order to prevent even one person from getting sick because of me. I ordered several new masks online recently as I've realized that the pandemic will outlast my current supply. Focusing on the needs of others has been a good exercise for me these past few months. I've found, and I'm speaking only for myself here, that I wasn't as other-oriented as I always thought I was, and certainly not to the extent that Jesus or the New Testament writers urge Christians to be. I'm thankful for the lesson, although I wish it hadn't taken a pandemic for me to learn it. Today we'll hear readings and prayer for Wednesday, November 18th, beginning with this prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast to the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Here is a reading from Psalm 101, verses 1 through 7. I will sing of mercy and justice. To you, O Lord, will I sing praises. I will strive to follow a blameless course. O when will you come to me? I will walk with sincerity of heart within my house. I will set no worthless thing before my eyes. I hate the doers of evil deeds. They shall not remain with me. A crooked heart shall be far from me. I will not know evil. Those who in secret slander their neighbors I will destroy. Those who have a haughty look and a proud heart I cannot abide. My eyes are upon the faithful in the land that they may dwell with me. And only those who lead a blameless life shall be my servants. Those who act deceitfully shall not dwell in my house. And those who tell lies shall not continue in my sight. Here is a reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 through 18. This letter is currently thought to be the earliest Christian manuscript written by Paul even before any of the Gospels were written. Despite its composition in the early days of the Christian movement, you'll hear in this reading the very themes that still define our faith today. Here is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 through 18. We appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Here is a prayer from the Episcopal Diocese of Delaware. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray to you, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
And here, in a first for this podcast, is a reading from the prophet Malachi, chapter 1, verse 1, and verses 6 through 13. Malachi doesn't get a lot of play these days, but the message of these first words of the book apply just as much to our current day as they did to Malachi's. An Oracle, the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. A son honors his father and servants their master. If then I am a father, where is the honor due to me? And if I am a master, where is the respect due to me? Says the Lord of hosts to you, O priests, who despise my name. You say, how have we despised your name? By offering polluted food on my altar. And you say, how have we polluted it? By thinking that the Lord's table may be despised. When you offer blind animals in sacrifice, is that not wrong? And when you offer those that are lame or sick, is that not wrong? Try presenting that to your governor. Will he be pleased with you or show you favor, says the Lord of hosts. And now implore the favor of God that he may be gracious to us. The fault is yours. Will he show favor to any of you, says the Lord of hosts. Oh, that someone among you would shut the temple doors so that you would not kindle fire on my altar in vain. I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, and I will not accept an offering from your hands. For from the rising of the sun to its setting, my name is great among the nations, and in every place incense is offered to my name, and a pure offering. For my name is great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. But you profane it when you say that the Lord's table is polluted and the food for it may be despised. What a weariness this is, you say, and you sniff at me, says the Lord of hosts. You bring what has been taken by violence or is lame or sick, and this you bring as your offering. Shall I accept that from your hand, says the Lord. Despite many claims to the contrary by those who distrust the scriptures, the Bible presents a remarkably consistent witness to our faith, which is defined by belief in the one true God of Israel, who was uniquely revealed in the earth in the person of Jesus Christ, whom Christians proclaim as Lord. The Old and the New Testaments, despite major differences, make the same faith claims and call believers to the same brand of ethical and moral conduct. Simply put, Love of God and love of neighbor as revealed in word and deed is the evidence that proves your faith. If you claim that you have faith but do not love your neighbor, then you probably don't really have the faith that you claim to have. That's it. I have always found it confusing and lately have found it astonishing that Christianity in this country has come to be defined not by the active love of God and neighbors, but by politics. I see Jesus was a liberal bumper stickers. I've got news for you, he wasn't. But I've also heard people say things like, I'm Christian, so obviously I'm a Republican. Actually, not so obvious. Now, if the message was Jesus loved instead of Jesus was liberal, I would have not had a problem with the bumper sticker. If they had said, I'm a Christian, so obviously I try to love others as Christ loves them, I would not have been surprised. Jesus was always overturning expectations, so we should be careful about associating him with any sort of political worldview. In fact, I can say with full certainty that whatever you're doing, if it doesn't come down to loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself, if it fails to measure up to either one of those standards, then no matter what your political outlook is, what you're doing is not Christian. Christians of all political stripes must relearn or maybe learn for the first time how to put their faith above their politics, way above. In fact, and this is just my opinion, but I think it's backed up by the Bible, if you're not allowing your faith to interrogate your political choices, then, and I say this with all respect, you're doing it wrong. This goes beyond politics too, of course. Our faith should be allowed to interrogate all our decisions, big and small. Mostly, it doesn't. And I'm talking about myself here as much as anyone else, but I'm also talking to pretty much everybody else too. Mostly, faith isn't allowed to interrogate any of our choices. If that were true, or if someday, praise God, it becomes true, I'm confident that the world would be a lot better. 
and we would all feel a lot better about our world. And so would the Lord of love. We'll close today with this prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. Tender God, gentle protector in time of trouble, pierce the gloom of despair and give us with all your people the song of freedom and the shout of praise. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you for listening. We'll be back again next week, Lord willing. Until then, please make every effort to stay healthy and protect the health and safety of those around you. And of course, grace and peace to all.